Dark clouds began to cover the skies of Europe, the clouds of Nazism. In spite of the terrible decrees, the yellow patch in the ghettos, <coughs> most Jews could not fathom what was about to befall them. Only a few managed to escape the clutches of, Nazi, of the Nazi occupation to safe havens. One of them was the Mujitzer Rebbe, Rebbe Shal Yadida Elazar, whose Hasidim made a tremendous effort to save him. As the Nazis entered Poland, the Hasidim smuggled him out of Poland in Vil to Vilna in Lithuania, and from there he made his way across Russia to Shanghai, China, eventually arriving in America in 1940. Meanwhile, in Poland, tens of thousands of Jews were being shipped off daily to their death in cattle cars that were part of the railway system. Roused from their warm beds in Warsaw in the middle of the night, husbands were separated from their wives, children rested from the arms of their parents. The elderly were often shot on the spot in front of their loved ones. Then the Jews were gathered and sent off in those trains to a place where their existence would no longer trouble the Nazis, to Auschwitz, Treblinka, and Majdanek. Inside the crowded cars, over the, cattle, over the clatter of the cattle car's wheels, rose the sounds of people gasping, <coughs> sighing, weeping, and dying. One could hear the, st the stippled cries of the children crushed together. But in one such car, headed toward the infamous death camp, Treblinka, the sound of singing could be heard. It seems that an elderly Jew, wrapped up in his ragged clothing, his face white as snow, had made his way over to his neighbor on the death train, begging him to remind him of the tunes sung by Majitsha Rebbe during the Yom Kippur service. <laughs> now, now what you want to hear is Nagunim, answered the other with a hard look the Hasid, with a hard look at the Hasid, thinking that maybe all the suffering had caused him to lose his mind. But this Majitsar Hasid, Rabbi Ezreal David Fasteg, was no longer paying attention to his friend or to anyone else on the train. In his mind, he was at the prayer stand next to his rabbi on Yom Kippur. And it is he who was leading the prayer before the rabbi and all the Hasidim. Suddenly there appeared before his eyes the words of the twelfth of the thirteen principles of Jewish faith. Anima amin be'munat shlema v'vias hamashiach be'af al pi sheyis mamea im kol ze achak hello b'chol yom she'avo. I believe with perfect faith in the coming of the Mashiach, and even though he may tarry, nevertheless I will wait each day for his coming. Closing his eyes, he meditated on these words and thought, just now, when everything seems lost, is a Jew's faith put to the test. It was not long before he began to hum a quiet tune to these words. There, amidst the death and despair on the train to Jiblinka, the Hasid was transformed into a pillar of song, bringing forth out of his bloodied lungs the songs, the song of the eternity of the Jewish people. He was unaware of the silence in the cattle car and of the hundreds of ears listening attentively in amazement. He also didn't hear the voices as they gradually joined his song, at first quietly, but soon growing louder and louder. The song spread from car to car. Every mouth that could still draw a breath joined in Rabbi Israel David, David's Anima Amin. As if waking from a dream, Rabbi Israel David opened his eyes to the sight of the singing train. His eyes were red from crying, his cheeks wet with tears. In a choked voice, he cried out, I will give half of my portion in the world to come to whoever can take my song to the Majitsa Rebbe. A hushed silence descended upon the train. Two young men appeared, promising to bring the song to the Rebbe at any cost. One of them climbed upon the other, and finding a small crack of the train's roof, broke out a hole from which to escape. Poking his head out under the open sky, he said, I see the blue heavens above us, the stars are twinkling, and the moon, with a fatherly face, is looking at me. And what do you hear? asked his companion. I hear, the young man answered, the angels on high sing Ani Ma'amin, and it's ascending to the seven firmaments of heaven. Bidding farewell to their brothers and sisters on the train, the two proceeded to jump off, one after the other. One was killed instantly from the fall. The other survived, taking the memory of the song with him. He eventually found his way to the land of Israel, and the notes were sent by mail to Rabbi Shaul Yadidia Elazar in New York. Upon receiving the notes and having Reb Azriel David's Anima Amin sung before him, the Mojitsa Rebbe said, When they sang Anima Amin on the death train, the pillars of the world were shaking. The Almighty said, Whenever the Jews will sing Anima Amin, I will remember the six million victims and have mercy on the rest of my people. It is told that on the first Yom Kippur that the Mojitsa Rebbe sang the Anima Amin, there were thousands of Jews in the shul. 
The entire congregation burst into tears, which fell like water into the pool of tears and blood of the Jewish people. The tune soon spread throughout world Jewry. With this nigun, said Rebbe Shaul Yedidia Elazar, the Jewish people went to the gas chambers, and with this nigun, the Jews will march to greet Mashiach. <laughs> I believe that God was not an emotionless bystander when his people were unjustly sent to their deaths. I believe that the legacy of those who perished in the Holocaust will live on forever. I believe it is my job and my duty to live for the six million ancestors that I could be close with today. Ani Mamin, I believe that the souls and the stories of the Jews who died in the Holocaust will continue to live on forever. Ani Mamin, I believe in the importance of unity among the Jewish people. Ani Mamin, I believe that the purity, sanctity, and perseverance of the Jewish people will continue to be expressed throughout life despite any hardships put in our way. Ani Mamin, I believe that no matter how hard it gets, it will always get better. Anima Amin, I believe that it is our generation's responsibility to carry on the voices of the survivors. Anima Amin, I believe that the Jewish people today are stronger than ever before. Anima Amin, I believe the terrible acts of the past do not define us as Jews. Rather, they strengthen us and our will to survive in honor of those who could not. Anima Amin, I believe in the Jewish people's ability to persevere even in the hardest of circumstances. Anima Amin, I believe in the importance of the unity of the Jewish people. Anima Amin, I believe that my ancestors who died in the Holocaust are not dead, but are still living through me. Anima Amin, with complete faith that the spirit of the Jewish people will never die. <clears throat> Ani Ma'amin, I believe that despite the terrible acts committed against us by the Nazis, the Jewish people are only getting stronger. Ani Ma'amin, I believe that one day we will be loved by all. Ani Ma'amin, I believe that the greatest revenge is continuing our Jewish heritage through marriage, education, and unity. Ani Ma'amin, I believe that nobody should ever be persecuted solely because of their religion. Ani Ma'amin, I believe in hope and the continuation of the Jewish people. Ani Ma'amin, I believe there's a reason for everything. Ani Ma'amin, I believe in the world to come. Ani Ma'amin, I believe in a world free of tyranny. Ani Ma'amin, that God created a beautiful world and it's all, it's for us, the Jewish people, to keep it that way. Ani Ma'amin, I believe in the power of music and the power of love. Ani Ma'amin, I believe in each one of you standing here today. Yeah.
mentioned two words when we first got to Treblinka. One was imagination, the other one was resistance. Imagination because you could look around and you don't see the death camp that once stood here. And resistance because we understand that here, just like in some of the other death camps and concentration camps, there were those that resisted. But I want to ask you to use your imagination right now at this time of transition, transition from weekday to what will soon be Shabbat, a time of transition from now what is the time we're spending in Poland learning about the Holocaust and going soon to Israel, thinking about the past and imagining an amazing future. Resistance is a very strong word. And I ask you to use your imagination to think a thought that probably some of you have already started to think about is whether or not you could have resisted. You look at some of the survivors that are standing with us right now and you say, those are supermen. Those are superwomen. Those are superheroes. If I was in their spot, I couldn't have done what they did. I wouldn't have made it a week. I wouldn't have made it a day. I wouldn't have made it a minute. But is that really true? The irony of Jewish history has taught us an important lesson. It's strange. That in the face of adversity and challenging circumstances, Jews have survived. And strangely, when we don't seem to face those intense challenges, that's when the Jewish future is really challenged. Let me tell you a story, a quick story I heard from a friend of mine whose grandfather survived one of the camps. We've heard these types of stories many times before where a Nazi officer goes over to the Jew and starts to kick him and starts to beat him with a club and starts to laugh at him and he starts to tell him, don't you get it? It's all over. The Jews of Europe, we the Nazis are going to take care of them. The Jews that are moving and will one day be in what is now Israel, their neighbors will take care of them. And the Jews of America, ha! The prophetic words of the Nazi. Those Jews, they'll take care of themselves. Rabbi Lau visited our community, the chief, former chief rabbi of Israel just a few months ago, visited Boca. We know that in the United States right now we have approximately five million, five and a half million, six million Jews living. He said that without assimilation, some estimates would have put Jewish life today in the United States at about 35 million. But instead, they say over the last 40 years, on average, We've been losing about 100,000 a year purely to assimilation. 40 years, 100,000, 4 million. You want to say it's 2 million, you want to say it's 5 million. But they call that a silent holocaust. And it's happening right now. Resistance is hard. And many of us think that perhaps we couldn't do it. We couldn't have survived the camps. 
but I want to prove it to you that you could have. We're taught in Pirkei Avot, in the ethics of the fathers. Vimkon she'e, vimkom she'e nish. Yishtadu lehiyos ish, in the place where there is no person, become the person. Be the leader, not the follower. If world jury is going in one direction, don't just follow them. Be the agent of change and turn the tide. You know what Jews are capable of? The survivors are standing right around us. For hundreds of years, Jews had to face persecution. You wanted to be a Jew? You had to make a decision. Do you want to be beaten up? Do you want to face the challenge of maybe being murdered? Or do you want to observe your Jewish faith and your heritage? Jews had to make that decision. And so many times they chose Judaism. We know that this trip, this experience is called the March of the Living. The living. Now it's our time to live for Judaism.